Today we're learning about the Roland GX300 vinyl and sheet good cutter. Although its primary use is for working with adhesive transfer vinyl sheet for graphics and sign making, it can be used for stencil cutting for print making, or even for heat transfer graphics for textiles and t-shirt making. We've nicknamed ours the Deerhound for its swiftness and precision in tracing the vector lines you create in software. This training covers the basics. Enhanced guides can be found in the red binder at the Makerspace. Here you can find the SOP, the Quick Start Guide, and the user manual PDFs. This is a fast tool. You don't need a lot of time to get a job produced. Here's where to use the reservation sign-up form at the Makerspace website. Just open the form and follow the on-screen prompts. For the vinyl cutter, we recommend a booking of one hour on the vinyl cutter machine, followed by about one hour in a workshop space to process the finished work. If needed, you can wait to do this post-processing work later. In this demo, we're going to focus on the use of vinyl transfer. Vinyl like this comes with an adhesive backing pre-mounted on a removable backing material and is transferred to any smooth, clean surface using a special transfer tape. The vinyl can be supplied on large rolls and our machine can handle rolls up to 30 inches in width. But it can also come in single sheets of varying standard sizes. There are so many colors, textures, and finishes to choose from, it can be overwhelming to shop for. You can consult with staff who can assist you in finding the right material for your job. To help you with your first cutting jobs, we supply complementary vinyl roll material in either white or black. We also have transfer tape and tools to help you with post-processing the cut. Your vinyl work can range from a tiny sticker all the way up to a maximum cutting area of 27 inches wide by 63 inches long. The tool needs a margin of one and a half inches and does have a limit to length, even if the roll is super long. We operate the vinyl cutter from this workstation using an installed driver that functions like a printer driver inside a graphic software application. Here, we're going to cut from a roll using Inkscape, the open source vector art program, but this operation will be similar in apps such as Adobe Illustrator. Load your file onto the drive. Don't process a project directly from a flash drive. Before you start any cutting, you want to inspect your vector art to make sure it's ready. You want to avoid duplicate vectors, and these can sometimes be hard to spot. An easy way to do this is to select the vector object by clicking on it with the selection tool and move it. If there's an exact duplicate underneath, you can delete the one you just moved. Do this as many times as you find duplicates. If a move reveals no hidden duplicates, you can undo to return the vector object to its original position. You want to avoid detail that the vinyl will have a difficult time with. Long parallel cuts like we see in this spiral tend to lift off the backing paper and follow the knife, turning into a spaghetti-like mess. Rule of thumb, if the final size of your job has parallel cuts that are closer than 1 16th of an inch, or about two millimeters, the chances of failure are high. Remember, detail that might work at a big scale might turn into an uncuttable detail if you scale it down. If in doubt, ask the staff. One other condition to avoid is an open path. Vinyl works well only as complete closed shapes. Inspect your paths to make sure they are closed. Here in Inkscape, we are opening an SVG file, which is a generic scalable vector graphics extension. It's possible to use a PDF or an AI file in other software. It's also possible to convert a high resolution pixel graphic file to vector output but that's beyond the scope of this demo, which assumes you have a vector art file. Once our SVG is open, 
we need to set the cutting area to the size required for roll cutting, 27 inches wide by 63 inches long, no matter how large the vector graphic is. In the main menu, find File, then Document Properties. In the dialog box, on the Page tab, under General, set default units to inches. Under Custom Size, set units to inches, width to 27, and height to 63. Then close the dialog. If you need to, select your vector art and place it within about an inch or so of the lower left corner. Even though this looks pretty funny in most cases, this is the required setup for a roll cut. If you're doing a sheet instead of a roll, the setup is different. Use document settings to create a size equal to your sheet size, keeping the vector art about an inch or more away from any edge for a border. For now, let's stay in a roll setup. Before we send the job via print, let's review safety procedures, then prepare the cutter. The cutter is a pretty safe machine. No personal protective equipment or PPE is required to operate it, but there are some danger zones. It's possible to get a puncture wound from the blade if you attempt to change it. Be aware of the location of the cutting blade in the moving cutting head. And instead of trying to change the blade yourself, notify a staff member. A more common danger is when a hand, loose-fitting clothing, jewelry, or long hair gets caught in moving parts. Secure or remove loose-fitting items before using the tool. And keep hands away from active rollers and the cutting head. Pause the machine first if you need to reach in. But the big danger is not in the machine. It's in the post-processing when you are using a craft knife to pull away waste vinyl. There is a separate video available at the Makerspace website to discuss proper use of a craft knife. Now that we know the danger points, let's prepare the cutter for action. To load a roll of material into the base using the roller carriage, loosen the wheel locks and slowly pull the machine out from the wall. Finish the move by locking the wheels. Adjust the roller carriage to fit the size of the roll by moving the rolling guides closer or farther apart. Place the roll of material on the two rolling guides and use the thumb screw on the silver horizontal guide. To loosen, move the guide into place, then tighten again. Open the clamping pinch rollers. Pull out a length of material to feed into the large slot. When guiding into the slot, first place it in at a slight angle to avoid catching on grooves in the machine. Once it's fed through, you can straighten it up so the feed is perfectly parallel to the cutting slot. Depending on the width of your material, Align the left edge of the material within the boundary of the leftmost verification mark. This is the dark bar you can find over each drive roller. The other edge should fall within one of the verification marks to the right. Move the clamping pinch rollers such that they are positioned at the edges of the material and also inside the areas of the verification marks. Raise the loading levers to securely clamp material in place. Be gentle moving the levers. Spool out a length of material longer than what is needed for cutting, leaving a good amount of slack. If you don't leave enough slack in the roll feed, you'll cause the dreaded motor failure notification on the control readout. We avoid this by making sure there's some slack in the roll feed so the motor is not forced to pull the entire weight of the roll. Unlock the wheels on the machine and return it back to its original position. Finish the move by locking the wheels. 
Press the power button to turn on the vinyl cutter. Use the arrows on the control panel to select the material. Observe on the control readout roll, sheet, and other options. We're selecting roll, and when found, press enter. Now before we run the job, we inspect the blade. It's rare, but from time to time, the diamond tip pivot blade will fail, and this is less a personal injury hazard than a terrible mess to clean up. Inspect the blade before use, verifying it is the correct type of blade. If unsure, ask the staff to verify. The best way to avoid messy vinyl is to test the blade pressure and sharpness with a blade test every time. On the control panel, find and hold down the test key for one second or longer, and a test pattern will automatically cut. Press the down arrow key to feed material toward you. With a pair of fine tweezers or a craft knife, test the ease of peeling for the cut shapes and check the cutting quality. Notify staff if the circle does not peel off alone and leave the inscribed square, or if the cutter cuts all the way through the backing material. With a good test result, it's time to cut. Back on the computer, in Inkscape, find File and Print to open the dialog and look for the Roland GX300 printer driver and select Print. The job will move quickly. Pay attention. You might see some vinyl peel up and run loose. You want to be able to hit pause quickly to avoid much mess, so stay close to the control panel while the job is running and be observant. When the cut is complete, the machine will stop. On the control panel, press the down arrow key to feed material toward you to run your cuts out beyond the cutting head. Press the sheet cut key to trim off the job. The blade will perforate the vinyl. You'll need to work it slowly and carefully loose by rocking it from side to side. You now have an independent sheet of vinyl with every vector in the design cut. Turn off the machine. If you're cutting a sheet and not a roll, set the document properties for the size of the sheet. You'll be surprised when the cutter seems to cut everything at 90 degrees to your document size. In other words, if your document is seen in a vertical or portrait orientation, it will cut in a landscape orientation. So, to set the cut correctly in the preferences for the printer driver, set rotate to 90 degrees. When loading standard size material in the machine, follow the guidelines under section 4.4 in the GX300 user manual found in the red binder at the Makerspace. For post-processing, you'll need a few tools. We've mentioned tweezers and a craft knife, You'll also want a cutting mat, a metal straight edge, extra craft knife blades, a sharps disposal container, a small squeegee, and transfer tape. If you're going to apply your vinyl to glass, we have a special spray-on fluid to eliminate air bubbles. Consult with a staff member to learn how to use that compound. The first step in post-processing is appropriately known as weeding. This is the process of pulling away unwanted vinyl material, leaving only your design on the backing paper. The design we will call the shape, and the waste material we'll refer to as the negative space. Some people will build vector lines into the negative space to make it easier to weed away smaller chunks of waste. But you can also just use a straight edge and a craft knife to do this. It's always a good idea to break up this negative space so you don't get gigantic pieces of vinyl that can accidentally drop back on your shape and accidentally pull it up. After blocking it out this way, use tweezers or the tip of a craft knife to lift a corner up and start to peel it away. Don't pull the vinyl straight up. Instead, drag it along parallel to the surface so that when it comes completely loose, the adhesive side is facing away from your work. Continue very slowly around the work until completely weeded. If you have some detail that might lift up along the weeded ground, you can carefully back this down to re-adhere it to the backing paper. 
Then use the flat of the craft knife to hold it down until the tension in the adhesive breaks the seal and allows the weeded area to be removed freely. It's not a race. Take your time. When finished with weeding, apply the transfer tape to the decal and gently use the squeegee to adhere the tape to the vinyl. The tape won't adhere to the backing paper. Place a strip of blue tape along one edge of the transfer tape side of this assembly. You'll use this tape to help you position the decal with precision if needed. Make sure your desired surface is smooth and clean. If using a non-permeable surface like glass, plexiglass, or metal, ask staff for assistance. Here, we'll demonstrate on a permeable surface of cardboard. Place the decal with the backing paper down and use the strip of blue tape to help you position it precisely. Using the blue tape as a hinge, rotate the work so that the backing paper is facing up. Slowly peel away the backing paper, exposing the adhesive. Roll it off instead of pulling straight up. If detail sticks to the backing paper, carefully roll it back and squeegee the material to stick to the transfer tape. Then resume moving backing paper to fully expose the adhesive. Rotate the transfer tape so the decal begins to adhere to the surface. Then using a finger, gently press the decal down, moving from the center outward to avoid trapping air bubbles. Squeegee the decal down after that and you can slowly and carefully remove the transfer tape. The transfer tape will not stick to the surface you were decorating. As you remove the tape, don't pull it straight up but roll it off parallel to the surface in the same manner you weeded the vinyl. If you see some detail pick up, you can carefully roll it back down, use the squeegee, and roll it back up again. If you accidentally create an air bubble, you can puncture it with the tip of the craft knife and work the air bubble out of the puncture with a fingernail or a squeegee corner. When finished, dispose of leftover vinyl backing paper, and transfer tape in a regular waste container. Place any dull craft blades in the sharps container. And please remember to clean your workstation and return all tools to the proper place for your colleagues. <laughs>